those who have been to a ruined wedding, what happened? Story 1. When I was 6 or 7, I went to a cousin's wedding. Everything was fabulous for little me, so much sugar everywhere. Basically heaven. The reception was in a big community center that was reserved for the occasion. Went to the girls' bathroom, passing by the men's room to see my uncle on the floor. Went back to the main room to tell my dad my uncle was looking weird. Well, uncle had a stroke and had passed away. The bride spent the rest of the afternoon crying, and everyone except close family left. Bright side is, the marriage is still going strong 20 years later, despite what happened that day. Story 2. My dad and stepmom's wedding was a cow show. For context, her family was terrible on both sides. Abusive father, neglectful alcoholic mother, and stepparents who didn't care about her much. And she basically ran to my father to get away from it all when she was 15. Bigger problem was, my dad was 26, also abusive, and just a real of a person. On my father's side of things, he hated his mother and blamed everything wrong in his life on her, as he did to most women in his family, later doing it to my step. So the wedding was doomed to be terrible. It started when my stepmom was walking down the aisle. She'd reconnected with her father in the last year and had recently been in a fight with her stepfather, so it was just her dad walking her. There was a branch in the way, outdoor wedding, but he pulled it out of the way. As she thanks him, he lets go and flings it back into her face and literally collapses laughing. She awkwardly chuckles, no doubt knowing he's going to get mad at her if she shows she's upset. And the day continues, but she's visibly upset. After the toasts, some people didn't drink the champagne that had been set out. The one thing she had asked of her mom was that she not drink. She was even given sparkling juice rather than champagne. So while stepmom is changing into her reception dress, her mom goes table to table pounding down all of the alcohol she can get her hands on. A cousin of mine who doesn't know what's happening starts chanting, Chug! 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 And stepmom walks back to her mom, downing the last one and denying everything. Cousin slips out the tent once he realizes what's going on and leaves the two alone to argue. Stepmom comes out crying a few minutes later, goes back to her car, and doesn't come back for a good 20 minutes. While all of that is happening, grandma pulls up and starts cursing out my dad for a ton of cow, including marrying a kid. Stepmom was 25 at this point, who she hates, not letting her invite a friend to the wedding, and him owing her a bunch of money. Dad tells her to fudge off and she leaves. Then my dad got mad at my stepmom for being gone so long, accused her of either being a baby for crying or of lying and cheating on him. So she sat down on the fringes and tried to not cry and also remain visible to my dad for the next several hours. They may have been dating for 10 years, but the marriage only lasted 6 months. Story 3. I've catered many weddings, and there have been some memorable ones. Fights between guests, wedding cakes falling over, red wine spilt on wedding dresses, the lot, the one I'll never forget, an all-day do small ceremony, a few close friends and family, and a big reception filled with a huge buffet every type of food you could imagine, and a free bar. All in the same venue, they had booked and paid for 250 evening guests, but 30 guests turned up at most. My heart broke for this couple. A massive, beautiful converted barn, loads of food and drinks, great music, but no guests. At about 10 p.m., the venue was licensed until 11 p.m., the buffet food had barely been touched. The few who were there ate, but it hardly made a dent as it was planned for so many more people. I asked the mother of the bride if she wanted me to cover and refrigerate the untouched food so the new couple could take it home, and her response of, oh no, there are still a lot of people coming, was the most awkward I've ever felt in my life. No more guests showed. There was a flash of car headlights in the distance about 10.30 p.m., and the bride beamed when she thought it was late comers arriving. But no, it was just taxis arriving to pick up the few who were there. It's the only event I have ever done where we didn't have to kick people out of the venue. At 11 p.m., the place was empty. In a nutshell, bride's parents paid for the day, and the happy couple had zero control over their guest list. Her parents invited all their friends to the evening function, but in reality, it was just associates they wanted to flex on, resulting in no one giving a cow about an invite to a wedding where they didn't know the bride or groom. It was basically just a networking event for the bride's parents. Edit for those asking. I believe the guests did RSVP, but instead of a handful of guests thinking fudge it, we don't know them. They won't notice we're not there. It was the majority of them. Story 4. I used to do catering work, and this one time my boss sent me to a remote location in the woods on a beautiful river. I found out while we were loading the truck that the boss wouldn't be going and that I was essentially in charge. My boss promised that everything was taken care of, set up, etc. So, you can imagine my surprise when I arrived to this remote location and literally nothing was set up. We were only about an hour early, so I frantically started trying to get the tent in order. We needed extension cords to run the coffee and tether were none. We needed tables to set up the food, there were none. 
I somehow whipped up impromptu everything for the missing things. And just as the bride and groom are arriving, we blow the fuse for our only power source, and the place is plunged into darkness. We reset the breaker, I move some stuff around, blow the fuse again. This delicate dance went on for the entire evening. Through speeches, first dance, the works, I think the worst part of the entire experience was when we went to rinse our dishes before boxing them up and found out that when we blew the fuses, the water pump for the place stopped working and needed to be primed again. At that point, I said, forget about it. We'll take them back dirty, and the crew and I spent several more hours after the long ride home doing them. That was the day I worked a 15-hour shift without a break and still ruined the wedding. Needless to say, I quit that job. Story 5. I was best man at my sister-in-law's wedding. Stepped in for the brother of the groom. That's another story entirely. For a whole year of planning all the bride, Sial wanted, was a dove release while they said handwritten vows to each other. Very small, non-denominational, most of the family are atheist anyway, wedding. Day arrives, early summer, and something is off with the bird handlers. They show up a bit late and are sourcing help from the wedding party to get everything in line. When the time comes to say their vows, I help the handler carry the chest with the doves in it, over to what is to be the altar where the bride and groom are standing. Vows are just about wrapping up and the handler gives me the signal to open the chest. I open it and see 20, 30 dead doves in the crate! I immediately close it to try and limit who knows what happened. Too late. The look of horror on her face was all that was needed. We spent the next few hours trying to cheer everyone up, but by the end of the reception, the entire wedding party had organized and filed animal cruelty complaints on the handler. It was all anyone could focus on. Story 6. Was a guest of friend of the bride. Did not know anyone attending. Very expensive over the top place. Several hundred guests of this very Italian wedding. Maid of honor grabs Mike at the cocktail hour begins her speech, rambling, drunk quickly devolves to stating the recently deceased mother of the bride was against this wedding, and that's basically what terminated her. Plus, Vinny will never give up prostitutes. She is tackled by several people and dragged away. The happy couple is separated and divorced within a year. Story 7. I was studying photography and used to act as an assistant to a well-known wedding photographer. Went to a couple's wedding, he digital and I in white film. Spent all day with the couple from 9 a.m. through till 2 a.m. the next morning when we left. I could see how genuinely in love they were. It was only a day, but I got to know them quite well and really liked them both. The next morning, I get a call from the photographer and his voice was shaky. He explained that the groom had been disappeared that night after the reception party. Three guys had broken into their bungalow to steal wedding gifts. The groom got out of bed to stop them, and they executed him in front of the bride. I was in shock for about two weeks. This story was in South Africa, if that helps explain how or why this happened. The next weekend, the photographer and I went to the bride's house to present her with the photos. We'd worked together to get the job massively accelerated, so she had the photos of her husband. We did it at our own expense and didn't charge her a penny for the day or all the prints and album. Sort of the least we could do. Because my photos didn't matter as much, I'd been able to simply capture those natural moments between them, rather than staged wedding photos. So they had the normal album pics, but also about 150 snaps of just them being a couple. She was in tears from the moment we arrived till we left a few hours later. She was a shadow of the women I'd met only a week earlier. That cow still haunts me. Edit. I didn't expect this story to get the attention it has. I'm sorry for any upset this has caused anyone reading this, but I believe it's an important reality check. I loved South Africa in a lot of ways, but it's a very troubled place with insane murder and assault rates. My story is by no means unique or even particularly shocking by South African standards. I also have worse stories like this from friends and neighbors. I have CPTSD from my time living there and the things I'd endured. I've got friends who were diagnosed with PTSD stemming from their time there too. Also, for anyone wanting to read the news article about this event, I hope this dissuades a few people from visiting South Africa, and in doing so, perhaps I save a few lives. Story 8. The bride's father was 45 minutes late to walk his daughter down the aisle. While we were waiting, the air conditioning broke in the venue. It was over 100 degrees outside and humid AF. The place was overcrowded. You could barely move without bumping into someone else and in the heat that was extra miserable. I guess the air conditioning problem had also affected the refrigeration or something because most of the food was spoiled. The only food on the buffet was salad, spaghetti, and rolls. Not enough to feed even half the guests. Most people left after the first dance. Two of the bride's aunts fainted. The bride and the wedding planner were crying. Story 9? Groom got so drunk the night before he couldn't make it to the altar at the ceremony. They still had the ceremony with only the bride and her party plus one of the groomsmen, who apparently didn't get wasted. Everyone there was shaking their heads the entire time. The groom did make one singular appearance for a few seconds at the reception. He looked like a zombie and was wearing street clothes. 
and this was no trashy wedding. The bride was a professional dancer for a major label pop star, so that gives you an idea of the type of people that were in attendance. 200 plus people at the ceremony alone, probably double that at the reception. They divorced within six months. Story 10? It was a big wedding. Over 300 people. Turns out the bride had been having an affair with her cousin's husband. The cousin had known for a little bit, but waited until the wedding to go table to table, letting everyone know the bride was sleeping with her husband. Poor groom was blindsided. Worst part was his father-in-law was well off and opened up a restaurant for him. Well, he lost his wife in his restaurant. Story 11. Best friend's mom got remarried and had an expensive, beautiful wedding, but for some reason didn't hire a DJ. Last minute, her mom asked me to manage the CD and gave me a list along with verbal instructions of when to play each. I tried to warn her that I simply did not follow, but she told me she had confidence in me. Apparently, all her life she wanted to walk down the aisle to some specific song, but I just couldn't figure it out. They had to get walking to match the sunset, so she went ahead down the aisle while I flipped through a series of incorrect songs too, the horror amusement of the crowd. For years after when I called my friend's house and her stepdad answered, he'd say, Is this the guy who messed up up my wedding? How are you? Story 12. I work at a golf course with a lot of history behind it. We do wedding venues inside the clubhouse and the actual ceremony is held outside by the historic water fountain and large pond. First problem was the weather. I live in the high desert and it was very warm. A solid 90 degrees that day and it was also pretty windy. So everyone's outside, no umbrellas, no ease-ups. The next problem, and probably the worst, was the golf cart incident. The bride and groom wanted to ride into the sunset on one of our golf carts, drive around a little bit on the golf course. To be fair, it is beautiful on the course during sunset. However, the cart had somehow gotten a nail in the tire, tire went flat, battery on the cart went crazy, and the cart ended up freaking out. It came to a complete stop from 15 miles per hour to zero. The wheels and mechanisms locked up, almost seizing. Both the bride and groom, fairly overweight mind you, both fell out and rolled over a few times. They were totally okay, just a few bruises and perhaps a bruised ego or two. So retrieving that cart was fun. And last but not least, the power inside the clubhouse went out to do the high winds. There was no after party available. Only the cake was, hardly any food was given out. Yeah, not a great day to cover for someone on your day off. Story 13. This was one I worked at. After the ceremony, right at the start of the reception, Photographer was taking jumping photos of the bride and bridesmaids, so they were all jumping in the air while wearing heels. Bride landed and dislocated her knee, then passed out and kept going in and out of consciousness. We called an ambulance who turned up and fixed her knee, etc., but she wanted to continue with the wedding. She then had the first course of the meal and threw up down her dress and had to sit with her mom in another room while everyone else danced, etc. Felt so bad for her as she spent the rest of the evening crying. Story 14 I went to a wedding where the bride and groom bought the wedding package on Groupon. Which is fine. Why spend a fortune for one day? But I guess the venue thought they could some corners. So they stuck us in a room that smelled so strongly of cat urine, some people immediately left. The only drinks were those from a vending machine. It was next to an airport, so every time a plane took off the ceremony, had to be paused because you couldn't hear anything. And the day after the event, every single one of us had food poisoning. Edit. Bonus story because even though it didn't ruin the wedding for the couple, it ruined it for the bridal party. I was a bridesmaid for my friend, flew across the world for over 10 hours to be there, had to do the setup of the venue, assign people to rooms, put signs on doors, finish the seating chart, transport food, redo her bouquet because she didn't like it, etc., etc. The whole time she's rude and tells everyone within earshot that the bridesmaids aren't helping. Her maid of honor was absolutely bending over backwards trying to keep her happy, and instead of being grateful, she instead told her sister, I should have asked you to be my maid of honor instead. She was pretty cold to me and kept asking if I'd lost weight. I said yes because I had been ill but didn't think much of it. At the reception, her new husband takes the opportunity to read the speech she clearly wrote for him to say to me, We are so glad you fit into your dress in front of over 100 people. I don't speak to her anymore and neither does her maid of honor or other bridesmaid. Story 15. We attended a wedding for family member who didn't have a lot of money. It was hosted at an inexpensive venue, but was nice. My heart broke when only a third of the people invited showed up. You could see the hurt in the couple's face. They came up to our table and said, Do you have any friends in city we lived an hour away? They had all this food for 100 people, but only 30 guests. They were willing to have complete strangers come down just so their money and food wouldn't go to waste. We hadn't handed over our card with cash inside, yet so my husband hit the ATM and added another $100. Story 16. Not me, but my elder cousin's story. He attended a wedding where the bride and groom got scammed by the wedding organizer. One hour before the wedding event, nothing there in the room. 
No food, no decorations, just few tables, and basically it feels like unused ballroom. The bride and groom realized the wedding organizer scammed them, and the wedding organizer took the money to bought themselves a big old house. When the bride and groom decide to see the wedding organizer, they caught him sleeping in his house. It became a national TV news here, and the wedding organizer got sued by few brides and grooms that got scammed by them too. Story 17. Maybe not ruined, but it definitely got tense. Started with the best man groom's brother just absolutely roasting the bride and her parents. Basically called them gold diggers and stuff in front of several hundred family and friends. Then they're the cake. Apparently, the groom was told under no uncertain terms not to shove cake in her face. Well, he did it anyway, and she stormed off, not to be seen for 20 minutes. Reception went on as planned. She got wasted, and I'm told she passed out that night in the middle of the street while still in her wedding dress. Pure class. They're divorced now. Story 18. I was invited to the reception of one of my good friends. They had been courthouse married for months and living happily. When I arrived at the location and saw the big crowd, I knew something was wrong. Friend's wife is prone to panic attacks and is extremely agoraphobic, to the point of breaking down and crying if she is overwhelmed. Immediately call friend and ask what's going on and if this was okay. Turns out friend's parents invited everyone possible to be there without my friend knowing. After I sent him a picture of the crowd, him and his wife thought it would be better to go on a second honeymoon than have a reception. He sent a message apologizing to all those his wife and him invited and telling them to leave without telling his parents. Parents had a meltdown as we left. Story 19. This was around 2009. On the second day of the wedding, the bride went swimming in the ocean. It took place in Tenerife. She swam out too far and was basically lost at sea for nine hours or so. She eventually found her way back but was in bad shape. Everyone was panicked the whole day and thought she drowned. By the time she got back, she wished she had. Her husband found her phone and read a bunch of messages supposedly from her aunt, but it was quickly clear from the alluring content it wasn't her aunt at all. She had been having an affair with the best man for apparently years. They got an annulment shortly after. 60,000 down the drain. One of the most opulent weddings I've ever been to. Story 20. A fight broke out between father of the bride, brother of the bride, and some guy that just happened to be staying at the hotel. In reality, I don't know how much of a fight it was, more just the dad and brother assaulting some man. So anyway, they were both arrested. To the bride sobbing at breakfast because her dad and brother spent the evening of her wedding in jail and now face assault charges for what they did to this poor man. Story 21. Hurricane Ivan. Our wedding was scheduled for Friday and the hurricane hit us dead center on Thursday. We were sitting around with no power on Friday and remembered that a neighbor was a pastor. So my partner and I just knocked on his front door and asked if he would just marry us in the front yard. So the big church wedding was canceled, but instead I got married in the front yard with chainsaws and stuff in the background. Been married 17 years now. Story 22. The groom's father groped both the bride and his daughter, my then-girlfriend, multiple times each. Ended up getting punched out by his son and locked in a minivan for a few hours until he sobered up. Edit. Half the questions are the same and the answer is yes. He groped his own daughter as well as his son's wife. Edit 2. Dude was belligerently drunk, had been punched, and if memory serves correct, had his hands duct taped behind his back. That's how he was able to be locked in a minivan. Child locks on the rear and too drunk to find a way to hit the unlock in the front seats while his hands were taped. Story 23. I used to work at a pretty upscale catering hall in NJ back in college, and we had two instances where I witnessed a ruined wedding. The first story is simple dot 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 BRID and best man caught out in the car. But the second story? We all thought it was weird when a couple of the groomsmen asked for, and got access to, the reception room during cocktail hour for decorating, not something we normally saw the men do. In any case, we get through the courses just fine, and one thing becomes very clear to us staff, the bride's side of the family is very conservative. They didn't drink, they barely danced, and they watched wide-eyed as the groom's side of the party went wild. Now it's time for the speeches! About halfway through his speech, the best man says something along the lines of, Hey, bride's family, I know you think your girl is so sweet and innocent and Christian, and they are the perfect couple. But if you want to see what they're really like, look under your seat. Well, taped under every chair was a picture of the bride and groom caught in the act. The groom's family and friends roared with laughter, but the bride's side was pissed. There were so many fights that broke out that night. Did I mention this was an NJ? The wedding was pretty much over at that point. Story 24. A friend of my girlfriend was getting married. The wedding was quite normal. They got married in the local church, and then there was the party in a nice restaurant. The photographer asked the bride and her bridesmaids, my girlfriend was one of them, to go outside for some photos. Some minutes later, one of the bridesmaids come back asking for help. There were some swans that attacked the photographer, 
and the majority of the people around him were not doing anything much more than laughing at this guy who was running around and screaming. Story 25. Went to a co-worker's wedding about 15 years ago, and this technically happened at the reception. It was a beautiful outdoor venue overlooking a lake. Anyways, the groom had planned to sing a song to his new wife and have fireworks launch as he was singing the last note. Well, that last note came, but the fireworks did not. He held that last note for a good 10 seconds before he finally yelled, Ew! threw the mic down and ran to go fight the fireworks guy. No fists were thrown, but somebody did end up in the lake. The party kind of broke up after that. They also ended up getting a divorce about a year later, after the groom got fired from his job for showing his banana to his boss's underage daughter. Eat it. I'm sorry to say that after 15 years, I don't remember the song, but the last word of the song was, Baby A. Edit 2. I don't think it was Kissed by a Rose by Seal. Edit 3. Thanks to Lippincott Elvis, I now know the song was When I'm With You by Sheriff. Story 26. My own. It rained and was cold. No one bothered to turn the lights on, so the few pictures I have are dark and grainy. My parents divorced earlier that year, so my dad hated seeing mom for the first time and didn't stick around to get a picture with me. My husband's mom didn't even take off work to attend. Apparently, the money was more important. Good news is that we just celebrated our 49th wedding anniversary, editing to thank everyone won the kind words and rewards. This is the biggest response I got since joining Reddit. Thank you. Story 27. Very beautiful wedding in a huge barn at this apple orchard. They must have spent a ton of money on the decorations and catering because it looked like something out of a magazine. The ceremony was great. The flower girl did her thing. The vows got everyone choked up. Everything seemed to be going well. Not even 15 minutes into the reception, the mothers of the bride and groom getting into a full-out brawl, hair pulling, red wine being thrown. Their sons jump in to defend their honor, chairs start being throw, tables are flipped, parents are grabbing children and running for their lives. The bride and groom are horrified and leave immediately and head back their honeymoon suite. My fiancé and I left after this as well, but we heard from some other friends that most people ended up staying and getting wasted at the open bar on the bride and groom's dime. Apparently, the fight started because one of the groom's sister complimented the bride's grandmother's dress. The bride's mom thought she was being sarcastic and called her a bad person. Then the drama ensued. Mind you, they had all been pre-gaming the wedding pretty hard. Story 28. I've been to a few, but this is the most soap opery one. I did a dessert table for a terrible, not wedding, at my old country club job once. As I'm setting up, people start shuffling in. Keep in mind, the actual marriage ceremony is supposed to be going on at that moment, so nothing is fully set up. Couples nowhere to be found. It felt more like a funeral than anything else. Just people talking quietly amongst themselves. I track down the wedding photographer, since I know he'll probably have details, and find him chatting with a bridesmaid. Apparently, the couple was super Christian conservative and young, like 1920. The groom got sent to a pray away the boy camp as a high schooler after getting caught dating his best friend there for like a year. He comes back, meets this girl, and they decide to get married. Ran into the guy he got caught with like two months before the wedding, decides he misses their friendship, so they start hanging out again. As the wedding gets closer, he realizes, what the fudge am I doing? Starts freaking out. And the night before the wedding goes to this guy's house, realizes he still is boy and wants to be with him. He calls the bride and she refuses to accept that he's not showing. So she goes through the whole mess of getting ready, takes pictures, goes to the venue, and he doesn't show up like he said he wouldn't. She loses her oh no mind on speakerphone with him at the church where everyone can hear while he's yelling, I'm boy! I like men. I love him. And my parents can't force me anymore. This isn't about you and you'll thank me in the long run. Story 29. Happened to my classmate. He is successful middle-level manager. Divorced about 35 yo or so. Found a girl of his dreams, but from a provincial poor town. The girl insisted to have the wedding in her town to show off her success. The wedding is crashed by her old friends, including male friends who are not that sophisticated and have some tense feelings towards the successful groom from the city. Somebody starts a fight in the middle of wedding. Groom is trying to stop it and got stabbed in the back. Passed away right there. And he was my classmate. Story 30. I'm a wedding photographer. I was at one really fancy one a couple of years ago. Typical outdoor deal at a swanky location in the middle of nowhere. The place was really nice. Had a large concrete stairway flanked by water fountains that led down to the altar area so the bride could be seen by all like she was ascending from heaven. The ceremony begins and the bridal party come down and take their places. Then the bride appears with her father. She takes three or four steps down the concrete steps and her shoe twists on her. She tumbled down a good 12 feet or more and busted out the majority of her front teeth in the fall. So much blood all over her. With the place being so isolated, it took a good 40 minutes for ambulance to arrive, and she was in intense pain. Ultimately, she was okay, and I got an email from them weeks later, with the reschedule date. 
This time, there was no stairs anywhere in sight. Story 31. Worked a wedding in upstate NY as part of the catering company. For context, this was at a summer camp type place. Ceremony on the lake. Reception in what could be described as a mess hall. It was in September, so I assumed the camp was trying to make extra dollar dollar after kids went back to school. Ceremony went off fine. During the reception, the owners of the camp realized there was a building fire across the lake. Building from the 1800s burned down. At the same time, the father of bride slipped on the dance floor and split his head open. Ambulance called, went to the hospital, ended up with stitches. Place was a mess with fire trucks, ambulances, etc. Bride and groom got in a massive fight. DJ packed it up and left around 8.30, wedding over. Proceeded to drink my weight in Yuenglings and sleep in my car. Made good tips, though. Story 32? The poor bride started her menstrual cycle on her big day, and she was nauseated and in pain all day. She couldn't eat any of the buffet because her stomach hurt too much, and anything she tried to eat ended up being vomited back up. She couldn't even stand properly either because of her cramps. She stayed seated. In most of the wedding photos, she's grimacing instead of smiling because she was so ill. Story 33. A couple of years back, I was waitressing at this function lounge that was hosting the reception. The music starts, but nobody comes in for a solid 30 seconds, so the DJ cuts the music. Everyone hears loud arguing in the foyer for about a minute when two men come stumbling into the hall, absolutely fighting each other bloody. It was the groom and the bride's brother? Turns out the groom's side of the family didn't want him marrying the girl, and the groom decided at the reception that he agreed with his family. Long story short, more people got involved with the fighting, police got called, bride was understandably a crying mess, but she decided that if she spent so much money on the event, then they were going to have a party with or without the groom. Honestly, she was so much stronger than I could have ever been so good on her for that, but the whole thing was an absolute mess. Story 34. Was invited to a wedding of a friend's friend because she didn't have enough own people to get the reception as big as she wanted it to be. Also, the bride and groom were super young, got pregnant three months after hooking up and marrying for all the wrong reasons. Party starts. Whole atmosphere is forced and strained. Everybody knows the whole thing is fake in a way, so I decide to spend my time outside with the smokers. Having a wonderful time until we can hear screaming inside and the bride runs past us very Hollywood style, all teary and dramatic. Turns out the ice cake wasn't stored properly, was slightly defrosting and a little lopsided. Bride didn't come back. Cake was really nice. Couple got divorced nine months later. Story 35. I met this guy in night college class. He was my study partner. He was always wearing some kind of crazy outfit. All leather and sunglasses indoors like. Or growing wolverine burns and dyeing them purple and wearing John Lennon style purple shades. Turned out he had bad teeth. Came from a terrible childhood. His mom pawning his stuff for sweets, etc and the outfits were distraction from his teeth, which he was terribly self-conscious about. He was the kindest person I've ever met and quickly became one of my very best friends. He fell in love with this African-American girl he worked with. He was white. She just loved him as much as he did her. As soon as her family found out, things got ugly, and they ended up living in my spare bedroom for a year. Her father was a preacher and wasn't thrilled she was dating a poor white kid with bad teeth. Her mother, though, was devastated. They decided to get married, and it was court job, show up, wait in line, get your certificate. I was the best man and just did what I could to make it happy. Her father, to give him credit, tried to put a bold face on it, but the mother wept disconsolately and loudly through the entire procedure. After the wedding in a quiet moment with the father, I told him my friend had a heart of pure gold. I offered to take them anywhere they wanted for their first married meal and bless them. They just wanted hometown buffet. Six years later, they had an 18-month-old son and he was at home with the baby and dropped dead of a massive heart attack age 34 or 35. So I went to his funeral and watched as his mother-in-law and father-in-law wept like babies and told story after story about his kindness and his love and what a good person he was. At the end, I shook hands with his father-in-law and all he said was heart of gold. Story 36. My dad has vintage and veteran cars when I was younger. He used to do some weddings with them. I loved clearing out the confetti from the car when he'd get home. One week he arrived back and there was no confetti in the car. On the way to the church, the bride changed her mind. And instead of taking her and her father to church, they asked if he could drop them at the local zoo, as it's her favorite place. So he did, left them there in full wedding attire. They were going to get a taxi home when they were done. It was the days before mobile phones, too, so I'm guessing PPL were waiting at the church for quite a while. Edit. Veteran cars are made before 1919 vintage 1919 to 1930 in the UK, that is. Also, I've just called my dad to ask him if he remembers this, and he seems to think, from what he could overhear, that she was only getting married because she was pregnant and thought she had to 
was early 80s. He also told me he did two weddings where the groom never showed up. Story 37. Not me, but a close friend. Wedding photographer. Waiting at the altar, the best man announced that the groom was coming out as boy and the wedding was canceled. Everyone laughed like it was a best man joke, but no, it was very serious. Bride was on the way in the car. She was not happy. All the guests had to wait while they sorted their lives out. In the end, they split the reception room in two, and each family had their own dinners. Needless to say, they didn't want the photos. Story 38. My wedding was ruined by a tornado. It touched down about 15 minutes after the ceremony was over and ended up being one of my favorite memories of my wedding. All of the extra people we had to invite didn't go to the reception because of it, so it ended up being a great party. All of our outdoor decorations were ruined, but oh well. Plus got a few badass pictures of me and the missus with storm clouds and green skies. Story 39. I worked at a historic house that was used as a wedding and party venue. It was very early 1800s, two floors, and upstairs was the bride's ready room. It was one of those picturesque TV-looking venues. I learned two things there. One, there seemed to be a lot of women who want to get messed up in their wedding dresses by someone other than the groom just before the wedding. And two, 200-plus-year-old buildings have incredibly thin floors. Story 40. Not exactly ruined, but a hilarious moment. Christian wedding where the pastor refused to say the phrase, you may now kiss the bride. The bride knew this going in but insisted that he say it and had herself convinced the pastor would change his mind and ultimately say the phrase. Well, he didn't say it at the end of the ceremony. Bride had a few drinks prior to walking down the aisle and proceeded to grab her new husband by the face and make out for what felt like a solid three minutes. At first, everyone was clapping and cheering for them, but eventually the clapping passed away out and we were left with two people just hardcore making out in absolute silence, tongue and all, in front of 300 people. I was a groomsman, so I got to see the stunned reaction of the entire crowd. Her grandparents and the older people were incredibly uncomfortable. Story 41. The groom's brother was the best man. The bride's sisters were her maid of honor and bridesmaids. The best man brother's wife was unhappy she hadn't been asked to be a bridesmaid too. So, she convinced the best man to not show up to the wedding with no warning. We sat in the church for almost an hour while they tried to find the best man. The groom was despondent that his brother just wouldn't show. A friend stood up and filled in for the best man. Relationships were never the same. Story 42. A woman my partner went to school with was getting married. We were invited but declined as she was a huge bully to my partner during high school. Two of my partner's friends were her bridesmaids and told me about the train wreck of a ceremony. In the lead up to the big day, this woman chose her perfect princess dress. Cue the next nine months of eating takeout and putting on heaps of weight. A month out during the fitting, she can't fit into the dress and she's bawling her eyes out in the change room. Her mom drags the bridesmaids into the change room and forces them to tell the bride that she's beautiful no matter what. But she needs to go on a juice cleanse diet until the wedding. They refuse and the mom gently tells the bride to do the cleanse. Fast forward a month, the bride has lost a few kilos and it's time for the big day. She arrives at the super fancy chapel, reception there too, dollar 300 pp with over 100 guests. She's walking down the aisle and there's a ripping sound. She continues to walk and her dress rips when she's halfway down the aisle. Cue the frantic covering up of the tear. She eventually makes it to her future husband and they get married. At the reception, it's the usual lovey-dove dribble. After the speeches are done, she gets unbelievably wasted and starts to dance aggressively. After hours of drinking and dancing, her dress rips some more, and by the end of the night, she's basically in her underwear. Needless to say, we missed a crazy night! Story 43. Not ruined, but marred. My ex-wife's grandmother was in her 90s in a wheelchair. While we're up at the altar, she won't shut up about the flowers and they might need water. She's not talking quietly to her neighbor. She's yelling in her old lady voice. She didn't have dementia. She was very with it. She had no volume control or what she was doing was inappropriate. She thought the flowers need water. They look terrible, she yelled. One of the cousins, without saying anything, got up and started to just wheel her out. Where are we going? She yelled. We all got chuckle at grandma and went on with the ceremony. Edit. Let me say that she was a very lovely woman. She just had a loud opinion at that moment. Story 44. My friend had a wedding on a beautiful tree farm. Horse-drawn carriage bringing the bride in. Beautiful waterfall. Rolling hills. First, it was raining. Like a hurricane, Noah's Ark kind of rain. They had to move the ceremony to the pavilion where the reception was held. The white horses drawing the carriage with the bride slipped and slopped until they were covered with mud. One of the groomsmen got a hold of a 40 of crazy horse, chugged it, then decided he needed to fight a friend of mine. As they were taking photos, he flipped the guy over on the staging area, knocking over a big flower display. He ended up rolling down a muddy hill in his tux, wandering into a random house and falling asleep on their couch. 
My same friend who had to avoid the fight had an ex at the wedding who was now dating one of his friends. She loudly announced that she still loved him. I mean, it was one thing after another. I felt so bad for the happy couple. The groom's uncle went up to him right before the ceremony and said that he left his car outside with the keys in the ignition, a passport and $2K in the glove box in case he changed his mind. Story 45? Not as funny as some of these stories, but power went out. Vickers started going on about rings and putting Vaseline on them, which we all started hysterically laughing about in the church pews, because we are immature children. One best man left really early because he hated the new wife. The other one got so drunk that after breaking cow and standing on tables, he got kicked out by the police. After loudly telling everyone the groom shouldn't have married her, it was an absolute mess. No one thought they should have married. We had a fab time. Got annihilated drunk. They're divorced now. Story 46. Wedding scheduled for March 14th, 2020. A lot happened in the preceding tilde three days, and their venue canceled about 24 hours prior. Bride was devastated, but the groom and the brother of the bride, along with the bridal party, two dogs, pulled an all-nighter, and the ceremony went on in the happy couple's backyard. Wedding was technically ruined, but it was an excellent reminder that the marriage is the important part of the ceremony. Story 47. Big wedding. Around 500 people. All the future wife's doing. She wanted the huge $70,000 wedding. I was a groomsman. Pre-wedding, he's nervous as hell. All these people has to be perfect. This is her dream wedding, yada yada. So at some point, the whiskey gets pulled out. It went from a calm, the nerves few shots, to he's just about finished the bottle. We give him water, get him in the shower, and redressed. It's go time. Midway through her vows, he pukes all down the front of her dress. It was horrible, but it was great. They're going on eight years strong. Story 48. The mother of the bride passed out on stage while lighting a candle, leading to a fist fight on stage at the church. The parents of the bride were very against the marriage because the groom was 58 and the bride as his 23-year-old employee. He had also been her kung fu instructor when she was a teen and her dad's kung fu instructor. They were disinvited from the wedding the day before, then re-invited the day of, and the mother was part of the ceremonial lighting of candles. She walked up on stage with a face like it was a funeral, and mid-lighting passed out, leading to the groom yelling at her passed-out body that she was trying to sabotage the wedding, which led to her husband storming up and punching him. And let's just say Luke beat Yoda in this Kung Fu Church stage fight. I was just a date at this wedding, thank goodness. Story 49. I play in wedding bands and I kinda have two. Father of the bride drops dead at the ceremony. The reception is delayed. We're all standing around wondering if there will even be one. After an hour or so, the people show up and we have a sort of party. I guess that one's not too bad father of the bride is doing the dance with the bride in a very, very seductive and gross way. Like WTF gross, the groom walked up, punched him square in the face and dropped and was taken away to be attended to. Never woke back up. I guess fobs should watch out if I'm playing at their wedding. Story 50? Oh boy. A friend of mine went to attend a wedding in Italy. Everyone was flown out for it a few days before, and the plan was to have a sort of joint bachelor-bachelorette party where the groom and bride would split up then reconnect back at the hotel. So the bride goes out to party with her friends, and it comes to about midnight when she returns to the hotel. She heads up to the hotel room she was sharing with her husband-to-be, puts the card in the door, and walks in to find her husband sitting on the edge of their bed, suckling on his own mother's balls. Apparently, it was a nervous habit he's had since he was a child, where he suckles on his mother's nipple whenever he's extremely anxious. I imagine, from not being properly weaned off breastfeeding, the wife had no idea about this habit, obviously. Apparently, he had been very nervous about the wedding, so his mother had decided to comfort him in their room. The bride went, stormed out the room, screaming and crying, told everyone she came across that the wedding was off and exactly what she'd just seen. By the next morning, the damage was done and the wedding was called off. Everyone got flights home. Husband didn't show his face around anyone for a long time after. I know this reads like that bitty sketch from Little Britain, but both my friend and his partner confirm it to be absolutely true. Probably the most mental story I ever heard. Story 51. I went to a really weird wedding last year. The bridal party had different, fancier meals than the guests and were drinking free champagne, while we had to pay for beer and wine with drink tickets, cash only, no ATM. There weren't enough tables to sit at. I guess the goal was to mingle and stand to eat, and there was definitely not enough food. People were hogging the buffet stations and going back for thirds before some people had eaten at all. The bride and groom, friends of my partners, were really standoffish and just took photos with their photographer all night. Then I guess a fight among the two families broke out in the parking lot. The cops were called. We decided to leave, 
order a pizza and get drunk in a park. And when we went back to our hotel room, someone was passed out in our bed. Ah, New Jersey. Edit to add. The passed out person was my partner's college buddy, whom I didn't know, but he did. No one knows how he got in and the room was locked. Name's Tom. Good dude. Bought us some very nice craft beer and Taylor ham breakfast sandwiches the next day. Story 52. I worked at a hotel. Groom and maid of honor get caught flipping on the roof. They leave in the limo that was supposed to be for the bride. Would-be bride was inconsolable and sat in the lobby in her wedding dress and sobbed. Could not be moved or consoled. She just sat there and cried for hours. Edit. Since so many people have responded, I'll share a bonus story from a friend of mine who also used to work in hotels. Conclusion? Bride and groom both punch cops and spend their first night of wedded bliss in jail. Big wedding, open bar with lots of booze. Most of the attendees, including the wedding party, are apparently gussied up white trash. Ceremony itself goes off without any issue. Reception become a big beer and booze-soaked party. It then starts to run late, so the catering manager tells the father of the bride that they've exceeded their time and they need to start shutting down. This leads to an argument involving several members of the wedding party. Blah, blah, blah! Do you know how much I paid? Blah, blah. They eventually comply, but it stirs the inner white trash. The party then spills out to the hotel bar where people keep drinking. Members of the wedding party are still stewing about the reception getting shut down and tempers are short. Finally, something triggers the groom and he takes a swing at someone. He swings back. Groomsmen start swinging. Now it's a full-on Donnybrook. Hotel staff manages to get them out of the bar, and the fight spills out the front entrance of the hotel. Police show up and start trying to break things up. The groom at some point takes a swing at a cop and proceeds to get the cow beat out of him. The bride, who at this point was just standing on the sidelines, screaming and talking cow, kick his peach, baby, finally decides... Well, I guess we're doing this, and walks up to a female cop and takes a swing at her. She chose the wrong female cop because this woman was apparently way more yoked than she appeared and takes the bride to the ground. Bride's faces hits a planner on the way down and busts her nose. She's now bleeding all over her wedding dress. By this point, the police wagon shows up. Several people are handcuffed and loaded up, including the bride and groom. They're all hauled off to jail. Story 53. I've told this story on here before, but I saw a bride ruin her own wedding. I was an evening guest, and a bunch of us turned up expecting the speeches to be over and for the dancing to begin. But something was wrong. Nobody had even eaten yet. It turned out the venue had brought the wrong meal out, and the bride insisted they recook the correct meal from scratch for about 80 people. After much to and fro, they hotel agreed and began to bring meals out as they were ready to speed things along. This meant that by the time we arrived, hours after the main guests had sat down, some people had eaten their meal. Some had just been served, and others were still waiting. No speeches had been made. The evening guests spent the rest of the night in the bar, occasionally poking a head round the door into the banquet hall to see what was happening. There was just time to get all the speeches in, plus I think the bride and groom waltz, before everyone packed up and went home. That marriage didn't last. Story 54. I was a groomsman at a wedding, where the maid of honor was so drunk, she kept knocking over a lit candle during the ceremony. While the bride and groom were signing the marriage certificate,